Hey everyone, it is Takara Jucker here at Social Media Marketing World. I am so excited to have Jen Herman, the Instagram expert with me today here at the Wee Video booth, and we are talking to her all about Instagram hacks for small businesses. Because as we know, it's a huge topic yes. this year. Video, organic reach, right? Yep. Social, how can we leverage it to help? But then on top of that, there's so many small business owners here. Oh, absolutely. And they want to get ahead. And we're so blessed to have platforms like Facebook and Instagram and TikTok where we can compete with the Nikes of the world, yep. right? As a small business owner. So I want to know from you, as a small business owner, even myself, yeah. how do we get ahead in this landscape of social media marketing and specifically in Instagram as a small business owner who's wearing all the hats. All the hats, business, yeah. Right? And like you, I mean, I can totally relate. I run my business, I run my brand. So one of the first things I always tell people is stop trying to do everything, okay? Like, you don't need to be on eight platforms. You don't need to be there every single day on every platform. Like, n like even massive brands with teams of 20 people can barely keep up that kind of content yes. flow. And I feel like a lot of people, even here at the conference, come in and they hear all these things and they want to go back and do all the things. And then they're like two weeks, maybe if that in, they're just like, I give up. I can't handle this. It's too much. Yeah. So be realistic. I always say do as much as you can do while being good and not driving yourself crazy. Yes. Right? Like you don't want to create crappy content. We want to be able to create really good content that resonates, but we also want to do it without going crazy. And sometimes life happens. We have kids, we have families, things happen at work that take away our time. And that's okay if you missed a post, the world is not going to come crashing to the yes, end. Exactly. Um, but pick one or two platforms to get started on. So, you know, pick, you know, Instagram and Facebook or Twitter and LinkedIn, like whatever you want as your two platforms, pick those to start. Once you've got foundations and you feel like you're getting the audience and the, like the regular engagement and you're getting the hang of it, then add a third platform. And then again, build the foundations, get everything going where it's a bit more autopilot-ish and then add more. Or maybe then you, you know, have an intern come in or maybe you can hire an employee and then you can expand. But definitely avoid the you know, catastrophe of overwhelm. Yes, I couldn't agree more. That's, I'm an advocate for kind of getting to be an expert on one platform at a time. So let's yeah. talk about, because you brought up junk content. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so people are saying, no one's seeing my post, right? Yeah. No one sees my post. I get no engagement. What's the point? I'm wasting my time. Let's yeah. give them some tips here. Because yeah. the, the truth is, if you put out really high quality content, yeah. you're going to get the engagement. hundred percent. Right? Yeah. And that, I think that's the biggest problem. And this is, I've actually got YouTube videos on this and blog posts on this. And I'm like, if your content sucks, the only person to blame is you. And I'm really sorry to be like the mean person that has yeah. to like call that out. But if your content isn't performing, it's your problem. Yeah. It's not an algorithm. It's not, you know, some manipulation. It's not someone trying to, you know, deprecate your content. <laughs> it probably just, isn't that good and you have to think about it from the concept of your audience so we as businesses and marketers pretty much I always say like marketers ruin everything yeah. right like because we're like oh well we have a product to sell we have a business to build we have to make money and all we do is shove all this sales content and our product and everything is push and you don't wake up in the morning when you log on to Facebook and go and see what a shoe manufacturer is doing or what Target has posted or what Nike, like in the, no one cares. No, that's not what you wake up looking for, right? You wake up to see, well, what are your friends and family doing? You know, did your sister-in-law post something? You know, is your dad on vacation? Like what's going on socially? It's social media. And so as a brand, we have to find that happy medium of how do we create content that our audience wants to consume that's relevant to them that still ties into our brand. Yeah. So instead of posting your product on a shelf as a massively obvious sales post, yes. have a person holding it or using it and talk about the product. Talk about the solution it offers, not just what the product is. Yes, exactly. Talk I, to those pain points. I don't think I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I want to see a post about the shoe in the box. Like, exactly. I don't think I ever yeah. thought that. Exactly. But I could <laughs> see maybe someone wearing the cute shoe and showing Absolutely. me how to walk in it or the newest and I've, feature. And like, I'm a bit of a, like, a shoe <laughs> of, like too. obsession, like yes. just, just like a lot. Um, <laughs> And I've, I've literally bought as a cold audience because somebody I know is wearing a shoe that I go, that's amazing, that would be perfect for an event or something like that. And I will buy it cold yes. because it's in a context that matters to me. Yeah. But had that brand just put that shoe out there, wouldn't have had the same impact. Exactly. So we have to put all of our content in a way that actually resonates with our audiences. And then we have to create the content that stands out. 
So the other problem I think see a lot of people have is that they're just creating content for the sake of creating content, right? It's like, check the box, I posted on Facebook. Check the box, I posted to Instagram. But if that's your strategy, you're gonna fail because it's not, it's not going with purpose and it's not going to serve something that's going to capture their attention. So it has to be you know, a bold statement. It has to be an image that has this amazing pop of color or something with a unique angle that captures their attention that they go, whoa, like slow the scroll, right? Yes. Like what happened? Why, like, why is it standing out? And then once they do that, now they're more likely to interact and partake in your content. But if it's just another photo of another busy setting and another thing, it's the scroll. They're not going to pay attention. It has to stand out. Yeah, I feel like we should always be asking ourselves, how is this post going to serve my audience? Yes. If there is no clear answer to that, don't post it. Post oh my God, I love you. Facebook. Yes. Okay? <laughs> exactly. I love to post when I go to a Post Malone concert or something. Like that. Of course. That, unless I can tie it into social media marketing. Right. I might not do it, right? Right. Um, so tell me, let's give them some quick wins. As, yes. You know, small business owners, let's give them ways to increase their engagement. Yeah. Because ads are more expensive than ever, right? Yeah. And they may not be able to afford it. Like they yeah. may not be able to come in with a budget. And so they want to get some quick wins that will get their content in front of the right eyes, yeah. in front of their customer avatars and their ideal audiences. Is there maybe a top three tips you have yeah. in whether it's hashtag strategy or engaging, getting engagement in, yeah. where to place these posts that maybe we could share with some small business owners? Yeah, quick so visually the color blue will increase your engagement by about 20 to 30%. So have a blue prop, have a blue background, blue clothing, blue sky, the more you can put blue. We don't have to overwhelm with the blue, but blue is actually a very trustworthy color and it increases engagement. Likewise, having humans, like, so it can be your hand holding a product. If you're showcasing the watch, have the arm, again, not the watch in a box on a shelf, right? So have a human component, animals. Everyone loves puppies and babies. So if you can put animals in there, that can help as well. So those are some like little content ideas. Hashtags on Instagram are like the secret sauce to success. Um, and you do have to be strategic with them. So you want to use a combination of popular hashtags, which are up to about a million posts. So I say about 500,000 to a million. Moderately popular, which are tens of thousands into about 500,000 range. And then super niche specific, which are ideally your exact solution to the industry, the niche, the audience, that sort of thing. And you want to have things that are content related. You want to have things that are industry related. So you have to go through and like find all of these hashtags, right? Like you can't just like wake up one day and be like, oh, let me just slap some hashtags on there and it's not working. Like you research these in advance, you put them in a note, you have them ready to go. But when you have these in there and you can use up to 30 hashtags and it's a use it or lose it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't use them, you aren't showing up in search. Yes. If you do use them, there's a good chance you can show up in search. So the more, the better up to 30. Don't, like everyone's like, oh, I don't want to use more than five. It's spammy. I'm like, it's Instagram. It, it literally is where you use hashtags. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Go nuts. Go nuts. And, but if you do that, you're going to show up in searches. People are going to start finding you that didn't know about you. And you're going to get followers. And you're going to have people coming to your profile and like clicking on the message button or clicking on, you know, your content and scrolling through and following that call to action to go to your website or those sorts of things. So that's an incredibly powerful way. Another thing I really love is contests. Yeah. Um, and you know, when it comes to contests, your prize has to be relevant to your business. Yes. So we're not giving away Amazon gift cards and iPads because yes. that's not attracting your audience. But if you can give away, like if, you're, if you do consulting, you can give away a half hour consultation. Do you have swag or products you can give away? Can you, you know, do something that's within your industry? It might be something more kind of popular, but it's relevant to your industry to give away as a prize. And then there's three criteria to enter. One, they have to like the post. Two, they have to follow your account. And three, they have to tag somebody in the comments. Yeah. In clarification, that's okay on Instagram. Yes. Not okay on Facebook. Okay. Let's just be clear. It's okay on Instagram yeah, to do this. A lot of about the yeah, I don't, I don't do Facebook contests because it's just so confusing, but yeah. Instagram contests are actually really easy. Yes. So if you have those three criteria, if I post a contest and you go, well, I want that prize, mm -hmm. you're going to like the content, make, you're probably already following me, yeah. but then you're going to tag a friend. Yes. And then your friend comes over and goes, well, that's an amazing prize. Like, yes. I want to get on that. Now they're going to like, they're going to follow, they're going to comment with a friend. And so it becomes exponential. And it, you, the first few times you do it, you may only get a handful of new followers. But the more you do it and the more your audience becomes used to that process, they're going to participate more and then you'll get more followers each time and it continues to kind of grow that way. Yes, and to even add on to that, we have a great client who's an influencer. She's so amazing and she does this strategy too with a mm. giveaway, but instead of even asking for a simple like or she goes, 
in one of them, for example, tell us your most inspiring quote. We're yes. gonna pick the best one. So actually even like getting yes. that engagement even more exactly. into the brand story, kind of telling what it's about, and she sells swimwear. So the, the gift is, Swimwear, Swimwear, right? Exactly. Exactly. We Video is here. They're giving away video editing uh, memberships for right. a year, right? That makes sense. Exactly. That's in alignment with their brand for And they're not going to attract people who aren't their target audience. Exactly. The, the people who come in are somebody who's that's a relevant, you know, target market that they can then see the content. And even if they don't win, they would yeah. be like, okay, like, I'm starting to like what you got going on. I Like, yeah, I want to buy that yeah. or I want to sign up or those sorts of exactly. things. Exactly. Okay, let's talk about, let's shift just a little bit yeah. in minutes here. So then I, I researched some small business owners as I'm here, I'm like, what, what can I help you with? How can I serve you with your pain points of video marketing? Yeah. Two things came up quite a bit, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, you know, and because we're with WeVideo and they're, they help you know, edit the videos, yeah. I have two questions. So one is, how do I get over the fear? I don't think you and I have this at all, of being on camera. <laughs> apparently. Right? Like, apparently, like, we, we, it's not a fearful thing for us, but it is, fear, it is 100%. a huge fear for a lot, so that's number one. And, it, and number two is, how do I come up with content yeah. to, to actually push out? Perfect. So, so, so first thing, let's get over fears. Yeah. First of all, it's all in your head. Like, you have your own psychosis that is causing you this fear. Like nobody else is worried about you being on camera. When you show up on camera, just like if you show up on stage, they expect you to be there. Like they're they're rooting for you to be successful. Nobody wants you to fail, except for like maybe a couple trolls, but we all have those and they're horrible human beings. So don't worry about that. <laughs> but people want to see you be successful. Like yeah. you just kind of need to get out of your own fear of that from that perspective. Yeah. But things you can do to overcome that because that's obviously easier said than done. One of the things I recommend people do is put somebody behind the camera. So have your spouse, have a friend, have a colleague actually sit behind the camera and ask you the questions. After like, and don't start recording and immediately go into the first question. Hit record, start bantering. Oh, by the way, did you catch that show last night? Did you watch The Bachelor? Did you watch The After Rose? Oh my gosh, did you see what happened? <laughs> now all of a sudden you're calmed down, you're relaxed. Then we start getting into the questions and now you're talking to the person behind the camera. You're not talking to the camera. Yeah. And now you get that comfortable, relaxed atmosphere so you're less fearful. It's gonna come off much more naturally anyways. And the other thing you can do is just don't be in front of the camera. You can actually film tons of video from behind the camera. Yes. You could be like kind of doing a voiceover as you do a tour of something or explain something, show a product in use. You don't actually have to be the one doing it. So you can keep yourself behind the camera as you get more comfortable and then you start to be like, okay, well that wasn't so scary. Oh, that video did really well. Okay, well maybe I'll do like, like a couple seconds on camera next time. Yeah. And like you build yourself up until this is just like you live in front of a camera and it becomes your normal life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> those are actually two really great tips that I've Thank never you. even thought about. So oh, those, great. Those are awesome. <laughs> um, uh, so, and what I like to say too is if you don't do it, guess what, baby boo? Like someone else will. Someone's right? going to do it, yeah. Someone else is going to do it. So do you yeah. want to be you or do you want to be someone else? And guess what? There's a delete button on that iPhone. So exactly. So take 100 videos oh my God. just delete. If you, like, and <laughs> eventually get to the point where you kind of know like what you're going to do and what you're yeah. going to say. But just like I'm sure with your camera, like when I go to film a video, if you could see like the screen capture of the 92 takes sometimes, know, just people. to record a 15 second story, I'm like, oh my God, that was 28 takes. I like, know. because know. it's not like, but the other thing <laughs> too is to embrace the flaws. Yes. So I'm queen of making up words and phrases. Mm -hmm. I was literally on stage yesterday. I'm like, it's a prefer, it's a preferential preference. And I was like, <laughs> so that's a phrase now. We're going to yes. roll with that. Yeah. And I literally stopped in the middle and addressed the fact that I made up a word. Yes. Like. It's okay, people actually appreciate those stumbles and fumbles that make you human, and that makes it relatable where, I mean, we don't want a complete and utter gaffe, but one of my top performing videos of all time was an Instagram Live, where it was like a disaster. Like, yeah. the camera <laughs> fell over in the middle of the show, oh my the doorbell rang, the dog was barking, the maintenance guy showed up. Like, so I had to leave camera to go deal with the maintenance guy. Like, all of this happened on live video. But you know what? Everyone in that audience was like, oh my God, you're a real human being. Yeah. Like you, you have a crazy life like me and you, these things happen and it, it took away the, like, the perfect background and the perfect makeup and brought the reality to it that they were like, oh, she's just one of us. Yeah. So don't feel like you have to worry so much about those flubs. Embrace them. They become part of who you are. Yes, exactly. Be human. Just be authentic. Be yeah. you. Share your message. The world is waiting for you to share. 100%. And only you can share it. Exactly. No one else can. I am okay, so what was the other? Oh. Oh, content. Content. How do you, yeah. How, like, wait, what's the other question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got it. We got it. So what is, so a lot of people have asked me, like, how do I, because I didn't yeah. them. What can I, how can I help serve you? I don't know what to talk about. Yeah. I don't know what to talk about. So how can we help them? 
come up with some content that again is engaging. Yeah. That is not all about them and very yes. salesy, spammy pants type yeah. of content that they can share when they struggle with so, what do I do today. One of the first things I tell people is 10 frequently asked questions. Yeah. Like those are the questions you're getting. Now look, we're filming a video about it. Hello, yes. content. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? So what are what are your customers asking you? What are people who could potentially be your customer asking you? What are those frequently asked questions? Pick 10 of those, 10 videos, done, you're welcome. Yeah. Like, and have those ready to go. And they could be a 45 second, it could be a five minute. Like, they don't have to be either super short or super long, just be prepared to answer frequently asked questions. Yeah. Then, come up with maybe 10 questions that are things that you wish they would ask. Yeah. So maybe there's something about your business, you're about your history, your story, why you did this, what's your inspiration? Like, these are all the background and you wish people knew that. Like, and there's so many times even I'm like, well, if people really knew what I did behind the scenes, like, they would really respect me. You yeah, know what I mean? Yes. And I'm like, but I've never really told that story. I'll tell anybody in person, but I've never filmed a video about it. You yes. know what I mean? Like, so share those stories too and get that word out there. And then, you know, people love things like the behind the scenes. Yes. Again, you don't have to be on camera. You can do behind the scenes. Take them on a tour. Like for realtors, you could do a sneak peek of an open house, yes. right? So it's, a, it's an exclusive preview. If you've got an unboxing, I tell people like, you got new product coming in, like peek open the box and start to tell people about it in a video, but then close the box. And then the next day you open the box and it it's only packaging. Like, and you build up, you can build up this kind of like, you know, excitement about it without fully giving everything away. And then all of a sudden, by the time that box opens, people are dying to know what's in there. So there's all these things you can do that makes something so simple, much more fun when you kind of pull in the personality and that behind the scenes, that exclusivity of your brand that no one else can tell. Yes, everyone kind of, almost like we're voyeurs in a way. I know yeah. one, of my top, one of my top stories was me behind the scenes, it was a rainy day, it was cold in Hawaii, that's where I'm from. <laughs> right. I was wearing these really cute socks that were all the way up and I was so cold, I'm like, and they had little cats on them, I'm like, who else wears these in the, yeah. and I was there in front of my computer, it's still relevant, like this is yeah. my office, yeah. I'm wearing my cat socks, who else wears these poles, yes or no, bam, yeah. I'm done and done. So, exactly, yeah. and that's the thing, like, when you're creating this content, a lot of it, like for Instagram stories, it's 15 second videos. Don't overthink it. Right? Like you don't need to be creating a 12 minute montage of a, like a 15 to 30 second video that stitches together in a story is going to tell a story easily, like in a way that people can relate to. And it's quick, it's painless. Yeah. Like it's 15 no seconds. Way. Exactly. Oh, I could pick your brain all day. Can we please have a coffee session another day? Because yes. I wish we had more. Can time. I come to Hawaii for yes, coffee please. sessions? Yes, <laughs> oh, And we have 100% Kona coffee there too. So. Right. But Jen, I'm so grateful for all your tips for all these small business owners who are kind of tuning in. So can you tell them where they can find you yeah. and learn more tips from you? Of course. So I'm everywhere as Jen's Trends. Uh, Instagram J E N N S underscore Trends. It's always Jen with two N's because I was born in the 80s with like a bazillion other Jennifers, yes. so I've always been two and Jen. Um, go to Facebook and search Jen's Trends in social media. You will find my Facebook page, but you'll find the Facebook group. And this is like the place to be. It's like the, it's the cool kids party. Um, but it's actually where I share all breaking news on Instagram. So if there's any new features, new updates or news, it goes in the Facebook group first. And then we all talk about it in the Facebook group. And then I go to Instagram and post about it. So if you really want to stay on top of everything, go hang out in the Facebook group. And then of course, website, jenstrends.com. Hit me up. Let me know that you found me here. Um, and I'm happy to say hi. What a great value. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. This is so fun. Let's do it again. So, let's do it again. Anytime, <laughs> girl. Anytime. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was that was so good. Thank Thanks. you. That was great tips. You're good. You're so good. You're just like me where I'm just like. Just roll with it. Yeah. Just roll with it, you know, because that's how I work best. I'm like, just don't script me. Just yeah. do it, you know.